six-monthly conference. This now, of course, is the annual results. I suppose you have got the press note which we showed. So you know broad numbers of uh, sales and profits and all that kind of stuff. So I don't have to <coughs> go into it. Except to say that uh, despite uh, the somewhat subdued overall economic climate, I think we have managed to do as well as we could expect to do what we set out to do. We have fulfilled our targets and our expectations. And uh, this year's uh, results in most ways are the best we've ever had in the past. So, uh, in a sense, I think we are taking forward the Make in India program by increasing our uh, manufacturing activities, increasing localization, getting more vendors here and such things. And we hope to continue to do that during 16-17, where uh, we are uh, setting ourselves the challenge of again repeating a double-digit growth despite the uh, many difficulties which are there in the way we can talk about when we go along. But yes, it's not going to be an easy year in many ways. Some of the positive factors which we've had are now seemingly not remaining that positive. The foreign exchange situation is not, uh, doesn't look as favorable as it has been in the past. Commodity prices have also shown some indications of uh, reversing the softness which they've had in the past. We have, of course, uh, the environmental and environmentalist lobby, which I think would like car production to be stopped or reduced because uh, it seems that uh, despite all the data to the contrary that cars in Delhi are not the significant polluters at all. In fact, we are very minor polluters in Delhi compared to what other sources are polluting in Delhi. But despite that, uh, I think the cars universally are a target for most people because they represent the well-off sections of society. And uh, despite whatever the facts or the numbers may be, people don't look at those numbers and logic and look at uh, the fact that cars should be attacked. So that also is going to be a challenge in the coming year, as you know what's been going on. But looking at all that, I think we will still work. Our people are all very highly motivated. And uh, the one thing Maruti people like is a challenge. And I think we'll take up this challenge of trying to get to double digit. And uh, let's hope that uh, some of the problems which the customers are facing in terms of uh, long waiting lists for some of the models, we'll be able to help to some extent by increasing production and reducing the waiting time. <coughs> because we are as unhappy as they are about the fact that we've had to keep customers waiting, that we've had to tell them to bear with this for such a long period. It's not reasonable, it's not good. But uh, unfortunately, that's the way we are today. We have to face that fact. And so while we apologize to the customers for what we are making them go through, we can assure them that we will be doing our very best to ensure that uh, we, we make as much reduction in waiting time as is within our past. So that's fundamentally all I wanted to say at this point of time. Uh, Kasan, anything you would like to say? Yeah. Uh, that, uh, already Chairman mentioned that uh, last year we had a uh, lot of challenge made and uh, 
new new car launch, new model launch, three model. Also, we starting on the new uh, third channel next year. So far, the challenge it will be at uh, uh, better than our expectation. And but this year uh, we have the facing some difficulty that we have to take over. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, that. Uh, uh, our model, some uh, some model that are very successful in the market. Uh, people, I'm sorry that the customer, the customer have facing it a long time, that the waiting time. We have to reduce that uh, waiting time first, and then to make them that happy. That is that first our priority, I think. Uh, we have to challenge that the volume expansion also. Uh, as uh, Chairman mentioned, we try to uh, tackle that uh, target uh, in this year. Thank you. Okay, we'll take the question. <coughs> okay, let's let's open it up for questions. Yes, sir. What kind of capacity constraints do you see in the current financial year, and what are you doing to overcome those capacity constraints? You know, as you've seen, our total production this year is 1.43. We have managed to sell 1.43 million. Our real capacity, Manesar and Golga put together, is really about 1.4 million, not 1.5, because uh, we could do 1.5 if we did more at Golga. But we have tried to keep down Golga production because of the inconvenience which larger production causes to people living in that area. So we are still there, so we are trying to increase the output at Manesar by various, uh, what should I say, short term expedients to increase production there. And uh, all of that we may get, now let's see how much we can push it up, because 1.43, if I want to do 10% on that, I really become 1.57. And uh, it means uh, 1.7 lakhs more than what is our real capacity. So I hope uh, our production engineers and production people and the workmen will all find ways of making improvisations which will enable us to do this. Gujarat will, of course, contribute. Ayuka San, about 10,000? Uh, yes. Uh, this year, maybe that about 10,000 something. You'll get about 10,000 only from Gujarat in this financial year. But uh, so the bulk of it is all has to come out of uh, Gurgaon and Manesa. On the timeline of Gujarat plant, sir, are you planning to bring it forward, uh, you know, by a few months? And if yes, can you give us an exact timeline by when will it start in the current financial year? Originally, Gujarat was supposed to start in about May or June. Yeah. Now, as I just said, within this financial year, we hope yeah. to get a, right. an output of 10,000 right, right. vehicles. 10,000 vehicles would really mean, roughly in the beginning, uh, more than two months production, I, I think. think so. so, if I was to extrapolate that, I would say we had to start production sometimes in January if we are going to get 10,000 saleable vehicles in this year. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. As you know, that you know, factory production is not suddenly coming at two shift basis. Gradually, we have to starting at the, the one shift basis, and then uh, gradually, 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 about six months, seven months. Uh, spend it that, that we have to go up, uh, up uh, increasing the volume that that kind of process could be necessary that uh, beginning of ne next year uh, Gujarat production start but uh, uh, ramp up time it takes time that's why the uh, you know becomes too shift that uh, you know six months seven months later I think you know. what? Originally, that uh, we are planning it in May or June, but uh, we try, May of try to pro May of propose. The Originally, it was May 17. Now it'll start maybe in January 17. Yeah. So this is Chetan from Bloomberg TV India on your left, sir. On your right, sir. 
So I wanted to ask you, you just mentioned about how cars are being targeted as a kind of a scapegoat for people to make sure that the pollution levels of the, of the country or Delhi specifically are rising due to cars. So ha has Maruti been affected some, in some other way because 2000 cc is the, is the limit that the quota has set up? No, no, 2000 cc doesn't affect us because we are, are not manufacturers of 2000 cc. But that's not the final position. The point is that our widespread feeling exists among a lot of people that the pollution in Delhi is caused by cars. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen the IIT Kanpur report, which has done as scientific a study as exists today in India about the sources of uh, pollution in Delhi. And uh, IIT Kanpur report brings out that PM 2.5, which is the main pollutant of concern in Delhi at the moment, because that's way above the safe levels prescribed. The other pollutants are not above the safe levels. PM 2.5 is. And of PM 2.5, cars, all cars, petrol and diesel together produce 2% of the total PM 2.5, which goes into the atmosphere. 2% of the total. Even if you take the secondary particles which are generated from NOx and things, it becomes maybe 25 to 3%. Now that is what is being targeted. The data available which we have shown to various people also shows that irrespective of the number of vehicles on the road, for example, Saturdays, Sundays, the vehicles on the road are much lower. You would expect that if I looked at the data of air quality index in Delhi over 18 months, which we have done, that Saturday, Sundays would show that the pollution levels would be much lower than on weekdays when the number of vehicles is much higher. The data actually shows that in some months, the pollution levels on Saturday, Sunday, on an average, is higher than the pollution levels on weekdays. And on some months, it's the other way around. The IIT Kanpur and other studies also bring out that the factors which affect the daily pollution levels and the daily air quality are temperature. The hotter it is, the less is the pollution level because all the pollutants rise up with the hot air, the wind speed, the greater the wind speed, they lower the pollution level because the wind tends to blow away the pollution and that has a much bigger impact on the number of vehicles on the road. That's a big factor. The direction of the wind, if the wind is coming from the Rajasthan desert side, it brings a lot of dust into the uh, city or if it's in the season where people in Haryana, Punjab, are work, uh, burning the top stubble in the fields. That smoke is blown into Delhi if the wind is in that direction. So wind speed and direction is a major factor which determines pollution level. So all these uh, remarks about what causes pollution and that by reducing the number of vehicles you will uh, reduce and clean up the air are actually scientifically not valid because uh, you have to do much more and Unfortunately for us, we are a dusty country. We are sitting next to the desert. We have a long way to go before we can control the other sources of dust in the city, including our construction activities, the roadsides that are all mud and kacha, fly ash, burning of municipal solid waste, which have all been incidentally identified by the IIT study to establish that these are sources of pollution and much higher. Two-wheelers, for example, we can't do much about two-wheelers. Politically also it's not convenient to look at two-wheelers. In any case, there's no option of what to do with the 5.7 million owners of two-wheelers in Delhi. 5.7 million. But they cause three times as much PM 2.5 as cars do. Trucks which come into the city. Some of them, I guess, have to come in because otherwise how will all the supplies come into Delhi? But they cause four and a half times as much pollution as the cars cost. 
But those are things which nobody has an answer for. The only thing people seem to have an answer for is stop cars. Mr. Bhargav, uh, if I could just come back to the earnings. Um, you, though you've given us a, more or less a guidance in terms of uh, targeting a double-digit growth for this financial year, I'm curious to know what your guidance could be in terms of your profit margins because the operating profit margin for this quarter has come in at about 15.35%. And considering the fact that ad spend was clearly a contributing factor uh, in sort of seeing the profit margins coming down from 15.8%, that was there in the fourth quarter of last year. Going forward, you're going to launch new products. Ignis is going to come in. So do we expect profit margins to remain under pressure? I'll have another question sir, after this. You know, we have never given guidance on profit margins. <laughs> and uh, don't intend to change that uh, system at all. <laughs> so you have to make your own estimates of profit margins. The analysts have to make their own estimates. New model launches will continue, that's for sure. The extent of uh, the margins are affected by foreign exchange. They're affected by commodity prices. They're affected by the discounts in the market. And of course, the other normal ads and expenses. All of those are factors which affect margins. Some will be positive, some will be negative. You have to make a judgment where that will lead us to. Fair enough, sir. We've seen in the past Maruti benefiting from the lower yen, dep you know, when yen depreciates. But this time it's beginning to hurt you because so, since the start of this calendar year, yen has appreciated over 10%. So I'm, I'm also curious to know what your own internal estimates are within the company because Bank of Japan will be releasing their policy statement on <coughs> Thursday are you now accounting for yen to remain uh, firm in the foreseeable future? What are your own internal estimates, sir? You know, we have no way of knowing what the yen will do over the next 12 months. We cannot guess. Mm -hmm. So we have a certain policy of hedging part of our exposure. Partly we are hedged in the form of uh, our export earnings because our export earnings more or less uh, are equal to our direct imports plus the royalty payments. So that part, in a sense, is a natural hedge for that. It's the vendor imports which are affected by the foreign exchange, and that's something which I can't predict. Which, as, you, as you know, for the last several years, we've been trying to reduce the vendor import. We'll continue with that effort. Uh, sir, government is going to uh, cap the contractual labor wages at 10,000 rupees per month. Will it impact the company and if yes, by like how much? What is the it impact? won't affect us at all because we pay more than that. Okay. Hi sir, Swati here from Kujensis. Sir. Hi sir. Uh, so on the production question again, uh, you're already operating at full capacity and Gujarat is expected to go on stream only in 2017. So uh, what is the plan of action for the next nine months or so? That's what I mentioned that this year our engineers and our uh, workmen are all working together to devise various expedients and temporary arrangements by which extra production can be in, uh, got. This could in, uh, include working some of the shops three shifts. It could include making some temporary lines for manual working so that some more cars can be produced. They have various ways of doing it. But we have to increase production to some extent, otherwise we can't get to our figure of uh, sales which we are looking at. You know, there is not complete interchangeability between models amongst different lines. There is a certain amount of flexibility, but not total flexibility, because there are several lines working in each uh, plant. And uh, to the extent that's possible, we always do it, to the that the more, uh, more models in greater demand are produced, the models in lesser demand are not provided, there is flexibility. But if there is no flexibility, you can't do that. Also, sir, just let us know about the, uh, your capital expenditure plans for this uh, ongoing fiscal compared to the previous one. So the, the 
present budget for capex this year is 4400 crores uh, is this similar to the one which we had in uh, 16 uh, 15 16 16 17 now we are in. Uh, no i'm talking about how much we had in 15 16 15 okay. 16 we spent how much 2500 2500 basically increase of more than 100% uh, no 2500 to 4400 is less than so it's 76% right. but uh, we could increase more if we could spend more sure and uh, which are the core areas where you where you will be investing these the two areas where we are spending more and trying to develop faster one is the r&d area because as you see the number of new models coming and the larger contribution which is being made here requires more expenditure in r&d and the second area is building the marketing and sales infrastructure our team for land acquisition is now in place they started work and uh, so far we have i think provided about 800 crores for acquisition of uh, areas for building the marketing sales infrastructure but if these guys can start doing faster work we can increase the allocation Sorry. The advertising cost. Uh, we just spoke about it. Uh, what kind of increase do you see in that? Should cost? be about the same level. About the same as this year? No, no. She's saying next year. What is it expected to go up? About yeah, about the same as it, uh, it was last year, no? Correct. About the same level. Uh, Mr. Bhargav. Sorry. Sorry. About the same level as 15-16. Instagram. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com/etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at @etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com/user/etnow.